We are getting into general election time, boys and girls. State of the Race is the podcast you can get for free on the Stu Does America audio stream. Make sure to check that out. Uh, we also um, have a question we've been thinking about for a very long time, and we finally, I think, come up with a, uh, the answer to it, which is, has Corinne Jean-Pierre ever worn the same outfit twice? Has that ever happened? We have a full investigation up on YouTube, youtube.com slash Stu Does America. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications. You can get the show there, by the way, for free every day as well. Rob Eno is here to explain how the media will be covering for Biden tonight after his big speech. Jason Buttrell is going to join us uh, with a new uh, documentary he's working on on the border. But we're going to start by doing the State of the Union 2024. As you may know, we are very uh, less than an hour away from the actual State of the Union coverage, which starts here on Blaze TV. I'll be hosting that. I will have uh, Dave Landau on the show, Sarah Gonzalez on the show, Michael Malice on the show. Jason Butcher is going to join me there as well. Uh, oh, yeah, Glenn Beck. We're going to have a great crew. It's going to be a lot of fun, and it's going to be like a roast. We're just going to be hammering Biden, uh, taking him to task for all of his misstatements, making fun of him incessantly. It's going to be a blast. I think you're going to like it. So what's going to happen tonight? Well, J- uh, Joe Biden plans a feisty economic reset. Among the ideas he's eyeing, uh, driving down the cost of prescription drugs, which I feel like he's promised in every speech I've ever heard from him. Uh, when you get to be his age, prescription drugs become kind of a big part of your life, so I can understand that. Cracking down on junk fees. The odd obsession with junk fees is, is really fascinating. I mean, look, nobody likes them, but is it a major economic issue to you? I mean, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't think it normally is. I think it's, you think more of like, do I have a job? Is, my, is the economy overall collapsing? Are there millions of people crossing the border on a monthly basis? You know, those types of things, yeah, kind of important. Hey, that $8 extra fee, yeah, I mean, important in some ways, but really not the purview of the president. Also, expanding the housing supply and emphasizing tax fairness. Uh, it looks like he's going to throw five grand. Uh, you know, again, he's trying to buy votes. He's going to throw five grand at all new Um, people trying to buy homes for the first time. We will see if that gets done. Um, Biden's 2023 State of the Union uh, proposals, what flopped and what succeeded, this comes from the Washington Post. And I bring this up because this is what happens, right, with the State of the Union. And these guys come out, they come out and they're like, okay, we're going to make a bunch of proposals. We're going to throw them all out there and then all of them are going to fail and no one's ever going to check up on it. And then, of course, with Biden, and we've we've seen this with like PolitiFact that fact checks all the promises made. They just don't rate the ones that he fails on. And when he does succeed, they give him the best possible treatment. And that's kind of what I expected, honestly, out of this article from The Washington Post um, saying, hey, what flopped and what succeeded out of the 2023 uh, uh, list. And I I can't go through all of them because it would take the entire monologue. But let me just give you a rundown of the uh, pass or fail, succeed or fail grades here on uh, Joe Biden from last year's State of the Union. Fail, fail, question mark, fail, 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 success, 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 fail, success, fail, 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 fail. But other than that, things are going well. Um, let me just give you, I got to at least give you a couple of these successes. Uh, the successes, um, <laughs> this is incredible. Uh, reduction in IRS funding. Uh, they, they rejected a, reje- a reduction in IRS funding. Um, he also uh, had a bipartisan legislation to strengthen antitrust enforcement. I mean, if that's not the sexiest election issue, I don't know what is. What else do we have here? I mean, there's just not a lot on here. Let's see if I can find... It's just amazing looking through this list. Um, he got new funding for the IRS. Uh, is that pretty much it? It's not, it's not a good list. It's a short one, and it's not good. Katie Britt will be here to enter uh, the national stage with a State of the Union response. Uh, she's, of course, from Alabama. New senator, kind of up and coming. People are talking about her a decent amount. She's been floated as a potential VP, probably way too early for that. Um, but she's young, and she's female, and, you know, again, we all talk about how we don't like identity politics. And then I guess we just every time seem to expressly wish for politicians with these intersectional qualities to rise to the top of the Republican Party. I don't know if that's the right thing. It seems to me that we should just be judging people on merit. And she seems to have some good features and some bad. Uh, State of the Union guests are going to be, of course, at the White House. You know what this is, the typical parade of people uh, in terrible, terrible positions due to Republican evil. You know, people who wanted to have IVF treatment 
and they were in the middle of their IVF treatment, and then they, they couldn't get it. Now, of course, th- that this didn't prevent anyone who was in the middle of their IVF pre- treatment from having it in, in one of the 50 states. And of course, you know, again, this is probably the most extreme example, right? You get an IVF ban coming from the courts, essentially, uh, and, and they're just interpreting the, the law. And so Alabama, the, maybe the brightest red state in the country, uh, they come out and, like, fix the issue in two weeks. Now, whether you think it's the right ruling or the wrong ruling, the scare tactic is insane, right? Like, if this was an actual problem, it was, it's already been fixed. Yeah, they're going to bring her out. They're going to have people who had to cross state lines for abortions. Uh, they're going to find some people involved, you know, that were victims of gun violence. Um, you know, some people who, uh, who are supposedly helped by the Inflation Reduction Act. I assume it's just going to be um, cohorts of Joe Biden and his friends that are now really, really rich. We'll see if that's the case. Uh, of course, Biden is in hardcore prep mode. Yep, that's right. Biden shares a State of the Union prep photo and mockery ensues. And here's the photo. <laughs> it's just Joe Biden looking at a page that has like four lines on it. The font is like 88 font. I think it's Comic Sans. I'm not sure. Uh, he's, he's going, I mean, how big would the binder be if he had a whole state of the union, uh, written in that font and that far spaced apart? I don't know. It'd be very, very long. I, again, my top piece of advice for the president of the United States, if I were in his camp is keep it short, go out there, show some energy, 18 and a half minutes, give or take, including all the applause sounds about right. I don't even want proposals out of you. I want five minutes. I want State of the Union is strong. As much applause as you can just drag it out. And I don't care if you're in the mid-sentence. When 18 and a half minutes comes up, I just want you to walk off the stage. That's probably the best case scenario for Joe Biden tonight uh, because he's just not up for this, as we, as we know. Uh, by the way, Trump has decided to counter-program. Now, as you know, we're going to be counter-programming here on The Blaze as well. If you watch Blaze TV, I think you'll really enjoy our coverage. It's going to be really funny. And uh, it's going to be just mockery. Uh, mockery, maybe some fact-checking here of the uh, State of the Union as we go with Dave Landau, Sarah Gonzalez, uh, Michael Malice, Glenn Beck, Jason Buttrell, great cast uh, of characters. We're going to be talking about that tonight. Now, you'll also have the opportunity to go over to see a little of Donald Trump's uh, kind of real-time reaction. He's announcing he's doing a live play-by-play of Biden's State of the Union address. That should be entertaining at the very least. There's a lot going on, and I think it's going to be uh, a lot of fun. You can flip back and forth. You can watch some, watch the other. It's going to be great. And, if, of course, you'll always have uh, Blaze TV's coverage on demand if you want it as part of your Blaze TV subscription. BlazeTV.com slash stew. Promo code is stew. Now, one of the arguments they will make tonight explicitly is that Joe Biden has done more in three years than most presidents do in multiple terms. And I think the reflexive response from conservatives is, um, huh? Like, wait, what? What do you mean you've done more? You've been a disaster as a president. But again, you have to understand the wording of this is key. He's not saying he's done anything good. He's just saying he's done more. And honestly... I kind of have to give it to him. He has done more to destroy this country in three years than any other president has done in multiple terms. That's something that I wouldn't be bragging about, but it is true. He has actually got a lot done, especially considering how small his majorities are. You remember, you go back to the Obamacare era. Obamacare got through by the skin of its teeth. Obama had 60 senators at one point when he started, and they barely got that thing th- through. Biden has altered our country in may- ways, I would argue, that are more significant. Certainly what he's done on the border, uh, what he's done with inflation, uh, a lot of his proposals, his spending have, have, have done this. I mean, his, just as his, I mean, his, what he did in Afghanistan is, you know, I think disqualifying for him to be, ever be president again. But also, like, one of the biggest, I mean, he's really altered the American experiment. Like he has taken a country admired for its military and admired for its stance in the world and destroyed it. I, like, every, you know, it's a, become a, we've become a laughing sock uh, for a lot of these reasons. He's, he has done a lot. I wouldn't, I wouldn't shake that down. I think he actually has. Um, now, of course, they're going to also try to pitch him as super sharp. Now, the way they do this, I don't know if it's Red Bull. I don't know if it's amphetamines. I don't know what it is, but they try to get him up for these big moments. And he actually hasn't been as bad as normal in these big moments. It could just be, if you want to be uh, kind and generous, 
he gets the adrenaline going for a few minutes. There's not much left. Not a lot of testosterone, I don't think, anymore. Things have faded away. I don't know what kind of shots he's getting. We'll see. Uh, the bottom line is, though, I think he's a guy who's fading, but has been able to get up a little bit for these big moments. Uh, the left is always trying to tell you he's as sharp as a tack. We will see if that's true tonight. And, of course, no matter what he does on the, on the stage tonight, he's going to be praised. He's going to be treated as if he hit an absolute home run. But the question really is not whether he can give a speech or not. The question is what has happened to the country? What has happened over the last year? What has happened over the past three years? Uh, not a lot of good things. You know, again, I mentioned Afghanistan. We've completely forgotten about that. It's the worst foreign policy disaster in American history in my lifetime. That's just like one of the first things he did. The border's out of control. Inflation has been out of control. The economy has been incredibly shaky. So many things have gone wrong. And, you know, normally there's never a good response. You know, Katie Britt, God love her. I hope she does a great job tonight. Usually that response is a disaster. So I'm going to give you the maybe a better version of what the Republicans should be talking about. This is from Mike Johnson's office. He kind of did a pre-response. Hey, what has happened to you over the past few years, America? Because do you want more of this? Here's the video from the office of the speaker. And my report is this. The State of the Union is strong. You should come. Surge to the border. Migrants surge across from Mexico. It's pushing resources to the limit. Some of those thought part of the terror watch list. Every state is a border state. Every city is a border city. Sharp rise in the amount of drugs. 8,500 pounds of fentanyl. Cartel controls everything that happens here. America is at a breaking point. Joe Biden is touting Bidenomics. Bidenomics is working. 78% of voters view the economy negatively. And that the president is to blame. We're changing people. Lives. Unrelenting price increases. Sticker shock is hitting millions of Americans hard. The highest economic growth in 40 years. The highest inflation rate, Mr. President, in 40 years. I got that. Crime is dominating the headlines. Surge of violent smash and grab robberies. 24% more murders. And the buck stops with me. The Middle East in flames. Israel has formally declared war. The Taliban has returned to power. Embassy shuttered. The flag coming down. Vladimir Putin doesn't fear this president. Xi Jinping told President Biden, China will reunify with Taiwan. Weakness invites aggression. Appeasement has failed. This open season on America. The country has soured on Joe Biden. The most vacation days taken by a president. The White House in damage control. Where is the president? Why isn't he communicating? As we've been discussing, you know, we've been facing a lot of tough times in this country and things are very uncertain. I mean, things maybe aren't as dismal as they seem because there is a point to life, right? Like your family, their future, your future. And we need to protect that. Everybody deserves a chance uh, to be able to succeed in this country. It's what we have always provided. Uh, but lately, I don't know, this has been turning around. You need to be protected. You need to be reliant on yourself and your family. And you can turn to self-reliance with My Patriot Supply. MyPatriotSupply.com has helped millions of Americans, including uh, me and my family, prepare for the uncertain future. Many of them start with four-week emergency food kits by Ready Hour. And with 16 food and drink varieties, there's no food boredom. You're not eating the same stuff every single day. You're going to have delicious food, over 2,000 calories a day. And here's the good thing, no starvation. I mean, I, it's one thing you want to avoid. That's just my, look, you don't have to take my advice. But I would say try to avoid starvation. Uh, sealed inside ultra durable packaging. These meals last up to 25 years in storage. And you can stock up on all the food kits that your family needs at the website, preparewithstew.com. Preparewithstew.com. You get each ready hour four week food kit for 60 bucks off. Also free shipping. Protect yourself, protect your people. You're not ready if it's not ready hour. Start preparing at preparewithstew.com. Preparewithstew.com. I want to bring in Jason Buttrell. He's the head writer and researcher for Glenn Beck. Uh, Jason, you're going to be on with the State of the Union coverage later on tonight uh, talking about your uh, documentary. I want to get to that in a second. But first, let's talk about the State of the Union a little bit. Yeah. Because, I mean, you've been following the border really closely. Obviously, all the developments in the Middle East and Ukraine. 
Like, where does the president go tonight? Because I feel like he's got nothing, no defensible path here. I, I, I in some ways, uh, sympathize with him because there's almost nothing he can do here. Everyone knows he's failed in these things. I mean, as a, a writer for a personality, I right. sympathize for the writer yes. on this one. Yes. Because, like, Biden don't know. He's just going to read whatever, he's going to try to read whatever's put in front of him. But, I mean, how do you, as you laid out, how do you spin it? You look at foreign policy. How in any way do you continue to make the case for Ukraine when you have a huge block of the voter base that does not want to continue to fund this war? Mm -hmm. They don't. But then so you somehow, I guess, try to have to appeal to them. But also your basically entire party is fully on board with continuing this war. They don't understand the outcomes. And somehow you have to push that aside in the State of the Union, like, oh yeah, it's perfectly fine. You know, we're not inching towards World War III at all. Well, we're just gonna continue to supply them with long range weapons and it's all good, you know, no big deal. I, I don't know how you make that case. And on the flip side, it's just sticking with foreign policy. How do you continue to make the case, any case at all with Israel? If you're in his position. So yeah, it's a tough spot. You, you already have, you know, activists eating their own, you know, they're eating AOC at the movie theater. Mm -hmm somehow trying to tell her, just call it a genocide. She probably has about a billion times. She kind of like, acted like she had said it, but then wouldn't say it for them for yeah. whatever reason. I mean, I, I, can, I can sympathize with that, too. Like, if someone's coming up to me like, you have to say X, Y, and Z. Screw you. I'll say whatever yeah. I want. You know, like, I actually kind of felt for her in that moment in a weird way because... Uh, I think she's actually completely anti-Israel and totally wrong on this issue, and it's not a genocide, and all the real reasons, uh, uh, you know, actual factual information that backs that up. Yeah. But, like, if anyone's been anti-Israel, like, if she's not anti-Israel enough for you, what vision of the world do you have? It seems to look a lot like Mein Kampf. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's true, but a big part of the the Jeez. voter base also kind of sound like Mein Kampf. I know. This. And they, uh, it was so much. Like, How do you talk about this issue during the State of the Union and appease them in any way? Because even if you try you to appease them, then you're going to piss off a lot of a significant portion in your own, you know, within the Democrat Party and independents that support Israel. Yeah. But, I mean, what, what, what were the um, numbers that just decided to not vote or vote uh, what, 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 uncommitted, what, uncommitted yeah, in Michigan. Yeah. There was some decent, uh, was decent. It was a hundred thousand people, I think. It, it was enough Plus. to give them what one or two delegates at the uh, yeah. at the actual DNC when mm. it kicks off. So I mean, that's a significant problem for them. I don't know how he addresses it. The traditional approach here, right, is when you have when you're in this situation, let's say with Israel, you know the right and a lot of the middle wants to defend Israel. They're one of our closest allies. You know you have this left wing flank that is like you know nuts, right? Um, they want Israel taken out completely. I don't know where Joe Biden stands on that, if he stands anywhere. I don't even know. He just seems to, at some, some of these issues, he just kind of like stands in the middle and hopes. But like the traditional advice from a political consultant would be like, okay, it's general election time. You've won the primary. You're the candidate. These people on the, your far left will eventually fall in line when they see Donald Trump as the alternative. Appeal to the people in the middle. Go yeah. after them and say, "Hey, look, Israel is actually in the right here. Um, you know, the, you know, we want we don't want them to go too far. Blah blah blah." But uh, you know, a ceasefire is not the answer. Something like that. That is not the path he is taking. And it's right. weird because he was sort of pitched as the guy that would take that path. This mm -hmm. sort of milk toast in the middle guy. That's not who he is. Yeah, I, I, I was laughing at his. Uh, you know. The path they have taken and the way they've been trying to toe the line, and I'm sure that will continue tonight, but this whole talk of the ceasefire, you know, during mm. this month, which, I mean, it's totally, what an amazing piece of foreign policy that is from the Biden administration. Who has ever thought <laughs> of a ceasefire in the Middle East during Ramadan? <laughs> wow. How did they get that done? I know. That's Shocking. never been done in the history of the Middle East, ever. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I was like, holy crap. It's a stunner. That was a win. Mm -hmm. Good job, Biden. It's just insane. I, 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 th I think it'll be <laughs> more of that, more of taking you know credit for things that we're really probably heading in that direction anyway. Yeah. Similar with jobs. I, like, let's just, you pivot towards like the economy. I don't know how on earth he makes any of that sound credible. Hmm. I mean, they've tried. They continue to push down the, you know, our throats of most jobs in the history, blah, blah, blah. Even though they've been fact-checked even by the Washington Post on that, they continue to say it. I, I don't know what you can say. I, I don't know how you can convince independents, which that's got to be who he's targeting now, big time, 
on this um, and make it somehow seem like they're not paying more at the grocery store yeah. or yeah, make it can. seem like somehow they can afford to buy that first home. Mm. Y you can't change that. Yeah. Uh, I, this has got to be one of the hardest State of the Unions, I think, to prepare for as far as his policy people. I, I, I can remember in a this while. This is what happens when you suck as a president, right? It's really hard to prepare for these speeches because you have nothing you can say. <laughs> He's going to try to buy more people off. You mentioned the, uh, the, the bu buying a home. He's going to try to buy people off with $5,000 payments, apparently, if you're a first-time homeowner. He's going to do a bunch of that type of crap. You but, know what I would do, Stu? Yeah. Well, if, if I'm his people, I would be like, there has got to be like an annual convention of Jimmy Carter-era um, policy people, you mm -hmm. know, like his staff. Yeah. Maybe if they just like go to one of those conventions and be like, help us out here. Like, w how did you guys <laughs> spin the Carter administration? Well, not like, well. I'll they take lost. notes and copy it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> line by line. You but, forgot this didn't work. Uh, it didn't work, no. but we need some, exp you know, some kind of inspiration, period. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's true. You know, it's funny because uh, going back to the Middle East for a second, to just show the position that these guys are in. And again, I don't I, they deserve this position, every bit of it. This is their doing and they are terrible at what their jobs are. So uh, I don't have any sympathy for them in that respect. But just looking at it from I don't know, the tactical like, you know, sports fan view here. How do you do this? What's your strategy? Like. Corinne Jean-Pierre, I listened to an interview with her this morning, and, and I do this so you don't have to. I'm sorry. Um, it was terrible. Uh, she was, I mean, again, just terrible. But at one point, she was talking about the, the Hamas ceasefire, and she's like, you know, like, what, are you, what do you say to people who want the ceasefire? Well, you know, we have a, a, she said, we have a proposal on the table that we hope Hamas accepts. So, wait a minute, who is opposing the ceasefire here? If we have, we have a pr proposal on the table, I assume that means the United States, in conjunction with Israel, right? If we're only waiting for Hamas to accept it, why again are the people who are defending Israel getting blamed for the lack of a ceasefire? At some point, someone needs to ask Hamas, hey, do you guys want a ceasefire? And we should, before you say yes or no to that, remember, that means you stop firing too. Because what they seem to want is a ceasefire from Israel. Yeah, uh, the problem is none of them actually ask Hamas what they really want. Mm. And that's got to be by design. Right? Oh, yeah, because you don't want to hear from the river to the sea <laughs> chanted in your yeah. face. You don't want to hear about, you know, the eradication of Jews and Israel. They don't really want to. That's this is what that's what this this is one of the craziest left wing positions. And there's a lot it, of them, yes. as you know, mm -hmm. but to be able to defend. But they try anyway. Like, you will see entire LGBTQ Elemental P marches going down the street supporting Hamas. And then I'm like, <laughs> what would they do to you? Hey guys, like, I have terrible news. Like, yeah, I'm yeah, sorry yeah. to break this to you, but... Uh, Especially when they're so offended by a joke. They go, like, they're, they're offended by a Dave Chappelle comedy routine about the transgender <laughs> movement. But they're like, fine with Hamas basically saying we'd eliminate all transgender people. That, that's totally fine. It makes no sense. Okay. So uh, do you think, I mean, knowing Joe Biden, and I will say this about Joe Biden. I was trying to work through this with Glenn on radio today. So let me just pitch this at you and tell me <laughs> if you think this is real. But it's like, I feel like Joe Biden has a lot of really bad moments as president of the United States. We see them all the time, daily, weekly, all the time we see them. But in his biggest moments, he has not been at his worst that doesn't mean he's been good in those moments, but he has not been at his worst in his biggest moments. You think of State of the Union addresses, uh, debates, you know, against, uh, you remember Paul Ryan, you remember Sarah Palin debates, even uh, the ones against Trump. He wasn't good in those moments, but it wasn't as bad as he is on a, a normal speech at a school on a Wednesday where he's like, blah, 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 and he can't even get the sentences out. He, I don't know if it's drugs, I don't know what it is, but they do seem to, he does seem to get up a little bit for these big moments. Yeah, I, it looks like when he really falters is when he tries to, because he used to be a whole lot better at this yeah. on just kind of ad-libbing and throwing in like his old, like, you know, I, he would try to create this like blue collar, you know, charm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the old lunchbox Joe the Old lunchbox Joe, that mm -hmm. type of thing. And that's when he, that, that's where I think, I think he believes like when he looks at his qualities, that's where he sees his qualities. Yeah. The problem is now is that when he looks away from the prompter and wants to inject that, and he puts that call out for some cool idea and some anecdote, there's no answer back it anymore. It doesn't show up, yeah. <laughs> right. It doesn't show up. But if you, but in his coaching, and they know this, and I'm sure Joe Biden knows this as well. I'm sure it's depressing to him, but 
they, I'm sure that they tell him to make sure you stick to you know the script. So as long as he's able to read, as long as his eyeball doesn't start bleeding like it did in that one debate, he should be okay. <laughs> That's true. I'm not. I mean, you got to be terrified though. I mean, you, you have to be if you're on his staff. It's so bad that they have the Easter Bunny following him around at events to pull him away when he starts going off on a tangent. Yes. But I mean, you remember that? Yeah, I do remember that. I mean, yeah. you, it's it, they must be terrified. They, I mean, it, 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 it's be. a very real uh, reality that you know tonight. A major, ba- you know, a crazy faux pas could happen. He he could say something crazy and look, or this, just blank out. The aging process hits all of us, right? Like, and it's like one of those things where I, I have this theory that basically the aging process of the brain is essentially like you're going in reverse technology order of the internet. <laughs> like you start out with like today's like high speed, and it goes back to like cable modem, and then all of a sudden 14-4. as you get older, you're at fourteen four, and I, he's at like twenty four hundred baud <laughs> at this point. He's on dial up. He, he, he keeps getting busy, you know, signals when he tries to dial in. He's on AOL. Yeah. It's just things are working really slow. Yeah. Occasionally, a piece of information will pop up. It'll be like a picture <laughs> popping up really slow on your screen, but that's about it. Um, all right, so we'll see if this uh, happens tonight. We have the State of the Union coverage uh, coming up tonight. And we're going to have a preview. Is this right of your new documentary? Yeah, we should have the trailer tonight. And oh, wow. It sounds like, I don't know if I should say that. It's coming out very soon. The documentary is coming out very soon. I'll okay. just say that so I don't get in trouble. Okay. Um, but yeah, hopefully tonight we'll, we'll get a trailer of it. And I really want everyone to see this because it's I, there's, some, there's some pretty big bombshell things to drop here. Um, it's on the border. It's on. It's on the mm-hmm. border. Um, we actually went to Eagle Pass um, and, and went to Shelby Park. Took a look around there. Talked to some cra- you know some amazing people. Also embedded with the trucker convoy um, because we realized that the mainstream media wasn't even bothering to ask them what they were all about. Right. Um, so we did. We rode with them. Talked with them. Um, it was great. Um, but some of the things we found out was pretty disturbing. Like for instance, right now. I think it's like around 95% of the of the migrants that were coming in over um, in December when it was just absolutely nuts mm-hmm. have stopped in Texas. Now we're seeing surges of upwards of 7,000 a day, but it's spread out in other states like Arizona, New Mexico, California. You're not seeing anything like that in Texas anymore. Well, why? Mm. Why did it suddenly shift? Well, I think that we talked to some people that explain exactly why it did shift. And let me just say that I think that a lot of times the the stuff that we hear from both the Republican Party, people that we think that we trust, and obviously from you know the Democrats, the left, and Joe Biden, is all a huge lie. And this documentary will explain why. Mm, can't wait to hear about it. Uh, it's going to be, uh, we'll, we'll hopefully have the trailer tonight. If not, we'll have it very soon. Uh, Jason Buttrell, he's the head writer and researcher for Glenn Beck and documentarian. Now, have, you, yes. have you put that on your card yet, your it, resume? It, it's going on my X profile. Nice. When I go sit down. Document- right That's a good one. <laughs> Documentarian's a solid one. All right, uh, Jason, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. Well, Joe Biden, ahead of the State of the Union, is telling people uh, that he uh, wants the Haley supporters, if you can get them. Biden says there is a place for Haley supporters in my campaign. He missed Donald Trump's response to this. He was basically like, aha, Nikki Haley lost by 50. You suck. Now, that's you know ar- arguably true. Uh, however, uh, you know, is it the best approach? My guess is it's not all honestly all that important what the approaches are here. But Biden is trying to embrace these Haley people. He said Donald Trump has made it clear that he doesn't want Nikki Haley supporters. I want to be clear. There is a place for them in my campaign. Uh, OK, well, there you go. And we'll see if that uh, happens. By the way, the I mean, one of the things of the Nikki Haley campaign that pissed off a lot of people on the right. And one of the reasons why her favorability fell so far during the primary was, you know, her super PAC was a lot of money from Democrats and it really wasn't a real sincere effort to get her elected. It was like basically an effort to bash Trump. And, you know, it seemed pretty transparent. But if it wasn't transparent for you yet, the pro Haley super PAC has relaunches, relaunched as Haley voters for Biden. Now, that was pretty quick. Uh, it seemed like they might have had that one ready to go, maybe. Uh, seems like the whole point this entire time was a pro Biden point and not a pro Haley point. Again, Nikki Haley cannot control her super PAC legally, so that's a, you know, a different story, but still it is uh, notable from their motivation standpoint. Um, now, if you can't beat Donald Trump and the Haley thing doesn't work, what do you do? Throw Trump in prison. It's a good way to go. Uh, Supreme Court is setting his uh, immunity claim in D.C. for uh, April 25th, so that's about where we expected the timeline to go probably June before we get that ruling. So this is going to be right in the heat. If they can, if they decide to go ahead with this, it's going to be right in the middle of campaign season, along with these other trials. I mean, I don't know. I, 
look, maybe our country is more resilient than I think. It's hard to see how this country withstands stuff like this. Uh, it's when you think about it, it gets terrifying. It really is as to what what this could turn into. Uh, and finally, um, The Intercept has a great headline on Israel. Trump is even worse than Biden. And you might say, well, wait a minute. Isn't <laughs> when Donald Trump was president, they had all this peace. They signed these accords with other Arab nations. Uh, they moved the um, Jerusalem, uh, the um, embassy to Jerusalem. Uh, without all the, you know, predicted terror that was supposed to happen along with that. But, I, you know, if you think it from the Intercept's perspective, it's basically true. I mean, like, on if your goal is from the river to the sea, then yes, on Israel, Trump is even worse than Biden. If you actually care about the people in Israel at all, you probably have a different opinion on that one. Joe Biden is supposed to uh, talk tonight about prescription drugs, which is like standard fare for every Democratic state of the union. They're going to say, oh, we're going to get your drugs lower. And then it never happens. Um, What's fascinating about that is maybe instead he could just address the fact that we're having trouble even getting our medications anymore, let alone what they cost. Uh, The Jace case can help you solve this because we have these medications shortages now. It's part of life in America, embarrassingly so. So get a Jace case on hand. It's a personalized emergency medication kit that contains five essential antibiotics, which treat the most common and deadly bacterial infections. It's customizable. It has dozens of add-on medications, and you can choose the ones that best fit you and your family's needs. Plus, you can get a gift card for someone. Maybe they're they're not close by. Get them a gift card. Let them sign up. Let them get their own Jace case for their uh, house. Jace is simple, of course. You go online. You fill out a form. You get a prescription. You get these life-saving medications delivered right to your door and have them in case of emergency or maybe just travel. Jace case gives you peace of mind so that you're not just hoping you have access to medication in an emergency. You actually have it. Go to jacemedical.com, enter the code STU at checkout. You'll get a discount right now. The promo code is STU at jacemedical.com. J-A-S-E medical.com. It's the Jace case from Jace Medical. I'm joined now by Rob Eno. He's the resident media critic right here at The Blaze. And Rob, it's a big night tonight for Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. And you know the passion's going to be there. You know he's going to be on top of all the facts. You know, this guy is just built for this job. What do you expect from him tonight? Uh, Well, he'll be pumped about it all as well (laughs) so that he can stay up and maybe have a couple of bowls of ice cream before he goes on. Mm -hmm. Um, I just <laughs> expect him to act like absolutely nothing's wrong. I read that one of the big things that he's going to announce is that um, the United States is going to build a port to Gaza mm. so that aid can get in. Of course, you know, no weapons will be smuggled, smuggled in by Iran and no. there won't be any of that. Yeah. And, and, and they said, but don't worry, there won't be boots on the ground. How does the U.S. military build a port without having boots on the ground? That's a good question. Do we know the answer to that? Are they all just going to swim? We're going to send in the SEAL teams and they're going to like do it, but they're never going to actually put the boots on the ground. They'll just be on like the sand. Right. Maybe it's a in floating the water. dock and they just push it toward the shore. Yeah. I don't it's, know. It's, it's absolutely. Yeah, it's ridiculous. But, you know, they're going to ignore the border. He's going to blame. Do you, you think he's going to ignore the border? Because I think he's going to say the border is the Republicans fault. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, probably. Right. Yeah. Right. So you don't think he's going to say he's going to say that the mm-hmm. inflation problem is corporate greed and not yes. the fact that they mm-hmm. printed money um, crazy. I had a friend. Um, we were talking about this Doritos stupid thing with the, the trans pedophile person oh, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I heard a little bit and, about he, that. and he was like, you Republicans now, you just, you know, you glom on everything. And, you know, it was like 15 years old. And who hasn't wanted to kill somebody? This person just put it on Twitter. And I'm like, right. <laughs> you know, I probably want to kill politicians every time I do groceries now. Right. With inflation. <laughs> right. In Minecraft, of course, not uh-huh. in real life. Of course. But, um, no, I just think that that's the kind of stuff they're going to try and take no credit for it. I, I mean, Nate Silver had a great piece um, this morning or yesterday, 83% of the people that voted for Joe Biden aren't going to vote for him again. Swing voters are going to break Trump's wait, way. Wait, in what, what category? 83% of... Of anybody that voted for Joe Biden are going to vote for him. I'm sorry. Okay, So yeah, 17% okay, aren't. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, wrong. Yeah. 17% that so was a massive... When it's only 3% yeah. for Donald Trump. Mm-hmm, yep. Mm-hmm. It's the swing voters mm-hmm. that are moving away from Biden because swing voters remembered when they didn't want to kill people when they went to the grocery store and buy something like spinach that used to cost 98 cents at Walmart and now costs 2.29. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's true. It's, it's interesting because I think 
the, the philosophy in 2020 for the Democrats to win that election was actually a sound one, which was Donald Trump is such a figure that, that draws media attention. He draws all the attention. If we just run basically a giant zilch, he will win because he everything will be about whether you like Donald Trump or not. And we're in the middle of all these passions and everyone's pissed off about it, either really excited or really pissed off. And I think we can win because Donald Trump isn't particularly popular. Like, that's a generally good thesis. That thesis can't repeat itself in 2024, though, because now it's not a giant zilch. Joe, Joe Biden is not a, a, you know, a manila envelope. He is a guy who's been ruining the country for three years. Right. And then Trump, for all the things that people do, don't like about him, and there are plenty, there are a lot of reasons why people won't vote for Donald Trump. Those all feel sort of distant and quaint now compared to what's just happened over the past three years. So if they try to rerun this again, run it back, I think they're going to have real problems. Right. And, and, and the left will say that it's, you know, the gas prices, oh, it was, you know, the middle of COVID, all of those things. Grocery prices didn't cost that much before COVID. Right. You know, it's all of these things just going on top of each other. And people are hurting more today. If you haven't gotten a raise since 2020, you're making 25 to 30 percent less your right. dollar goes 25 to 30 percent less than it was in 2020. These things hurt people's paychecks and paper book or pocketbooks. And then you look at things like, you know, cities that are rampant with crime. Governor Holchel sends the National Guard for the crime problem in New York, which is mostly migrant driven. Mm -hmm. um, the state of Massachusetts has a must shelter law. So they're paying, you know, I think it's 62 dollars a day for people to eat. For migrants to eat. I don't know if you saw that story a few Jeez. weeks ago. Like, that's what they're paying the catering company in some of these. It's incredible. Some of these hotels that they're putting up migrants because they have a right to shelter law. You know, all of these things people know, and it's not just crazy right wing Republicans that are getting upset at it. It's weird. The, the New York has like the someone po posted this on Twitter, a version of this, which is so true. It's like that New York basically on the Democratic side have two speeds, which is one, the purge. Everything goes. No crime will ever. You will never be arrested for anything. And uh, the other is like stop and frisk. Like you're just yeah. every single person, no matter whether they've even been accused of anything wrong, is getting frisked and pushed to the side. It's like it's a very strange dichotomy there. And that's what I think they're doing on the subway, right? They're, they're going to do like check every bag on the subway now. Yeah, like, like they used to. I, like I, and and, the, and you know you got the feds involved. Like they're doing everything they can uh, in, in New York. It's very it's a very strange situation. And it's funny because like you saw on MSNBC the other day. Um, Rachel Maddow, uh, Joy Reid, and Jen Psaki joking about, oh, I can't believe these people in West Virginia think immigration's the problem. What are they worried about? Their, their, you know, their border with West Virginia? Ha, 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 ha. Yet one of the cities that they've been talking about for months, and everyone has, is Washington, D.C., where they do actually scare, share a border. <laughs> and they are, they are having such a massive problem there, and in New York, and Chicago, and Boston, and everywhere else, that... It can't be ignored anymore. This, this idea, what, what Greg Abbott has done, and a lot of people have criticisms, especially in Texas, about Greg Abbott. Outside of Texas, I think people think he's really good if you're conservative. Right. But if you're in Texas, yeah, high standards. Um, but just that one thing that he has done has completely changed this debate and has put the Republicans in a position that they should not screw up where they should absolutely win this election. If you can't win an election as a Republican with immigration as your top issue uh, among all voters nationwide, you're never going to win one. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I think that this plays right to Trump's strengths. Now, will he do something about it? He didn't do something about it really. Well, he did do some stuff about it. Some, he, had the, he had the, you know, stay in Mexico, yep. all of those things. And you got Joe Biden saying, well, I can't do stay in Mexico because the Mexicans don't want them to stay there. What? what, what? So, so you can do a stay in Mexico if you secure the border. Right. Right. That's that's the key. Yeah. If you stop them before they come in, then they have then to they're stay staying in Mexico. In Mexico. That's exactly. how that works. And then Mexico is going to secure its southern border mm -hmm. if they can't just be the transit point. You know, it, it's a which is what they did under the Joe Biden presidency or under the, the Donald Trump yeah. presidency. And as soon as Joe Biden took over, you saw that caravan just start marching its way through the Darien Gap and up here. I mean, China is building roads. In the Darien Gap, which is the Darien Gap is the small yeah. bit of um, Panama that's between Panama and Colombia that is like the most densely jungled area that, you know, the Pan American Highway goes from Alaska to Tierra del Fuego, but doesn't go through the Dar Darien Gap. Well, good news. The Chinese are kind of making roads there now. So maybe the Pan American Highway mm. can go there and we won't have to foot the bill. <laughs> Amazing. All right. Let me ask you a, a question because you've had many roles throughout your life. One of them is working on campaigns. Right. So kind of put yourself in a position. And I know this is difficult. But if Joe Biden is your candidate, this is who you have. 
You've got him. He's got to make this speech tonight. He's got to talk about the economy. He's got to talk about the border. He's got to talk about this stuff. How would you advise him to go through this tonight? Um, read the teleprompter. Don't go off script. Take all of your Adderall and eat seven <laughs> pints of ice cream. <laughs> and go to and not get up until about three o'clock in the afternoon. We'll put the lid on in the morning. Right. And we'll take the lid off at about three or four o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, in all seriousness, and like, don't do walk you, like this when you get off right, the stage. Try to watch one direction and keep going in that direction. Yeah. Um, would you tell them? And I think this will be one of my main pieces of advice. Keep it freaking short. Yeah. You know, the American people have a short attention span anyway. The Adderall may last him 20 to 30 minutes. Keep it around that range. Get in, get out, get it over with. Right. And, and I would actually tell him to keep his temper under check because the Republicans are going to jeer him. They're going to do everything. And he could have a massive meltdown because yeah. he is prone to that. Mm -hmm. And I think when you're in the, the cognitive state that Joe Biden's in, it's hard to not have that crazy yeah. breakdown. I mean, I think you could see that at this State of the Union. Yeah, I, I, thought, I thought you could too. You know, it's interesting because, as you know, you work behind the scenes in campaigns, especially in a presidential campaign. You have hundreds of hundreds of people whose basic job is to make sure the candidate looks as good as possible. And like every prominent person has people around them saying like, I wouldn't do that. You know, why don't you go this way? Why don't you kind of stay away from this problem area? What we're seeing of Joe Biden, which is so disturbing to all Americans, you know, was it 86 percent of Americans think he's too old to do this right. job right now? What we're seeing is 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 like the best possible version of him. Like we're seeing all the times that that all these m amazing political experts are saying, yeah, I guess it's OK to put him in this position. And he's falling on his face. They're not like the, the, I think the most revealing moment of this entire campaign so far is Joe Biden not taking the Super Bowl interview. That right. is like, it's mind-blowing. It's, it's an easy interview. It's with a friendly media source. It's the biggest uh, stage you can possibly have before the biggest uh, television event of the year. And he rejected that. The only reason is the people around him must have said, this is more likely to go terribly wrong for us than go right. And if you have that as a candidate, why would you want him on your ticket? Right. It, it's exactly what happened right after the um, right after the, re the special counsel's report came out mm. about how he was cognitively he couldn't remember his when yeah, his son died what, all of that stuff. Well-meaning elderly person with poor memory. Yeah. Exactly, mm -hmm. and they had that press conference to show that he was on top of it, and it was a train wreck. Yeah. Yep. It, it, the way they push back against this seemingly is what if we show him angry. Right. Like they've leaked this to the media a bunch of times. I'm sure you've noticed this where they're like, actually, behind the scenes, he's taking his people to task. He's yelling at him. He's swearing. He's calling Joe uh, Donald Trump this name. He's calling Mitch McConnell this name. And it's like, well, I don't know. That seems more like consistent with senility. Like, right. Exactly. Right? Like, like it, Alzheimer's. This is old man actual, yells at tree. Yeah. Old man yells at tree. And it right. seems like it, their their effort to push back is actually making it worse. Absolutely. And it depends on what he has. Right. I have a, a large a lot of my family has frontal temporal dementia, FTD, mm. and that is one of the things that happens is your Scary. personality changes and you just get angry and mean at people. Yeah. I've seen it happen. Um, and uh, gosh, we were out of time because I was going I wanted to go into the, the Hunter Biden email that came right. out today. The media is not covering that either. We're going to have to hold off on that one till next time. Rob, Eno, he's a resident media critic right here at Blaze Media. Rob, thanks for breaking this down for us. Hey, thanks for having me on. Coming up next on Blaze TV is Blaze TV's roast of Joe Biden as he delivers what will hopefully be his final State of the Union address as president of the United States. Doesn't that sound just amazing when I said that? Join uh, myself, Glenn Beck, Dave Landau, Sarah Gonzalez, Jason Buttrell, and Michael Malice as we react to what is sure to be a memorable speech, for better or for worse. Check it out, blazedv.com uh, slash stew. Use the promo code stew and you will save 20 bucks. Stay tuned. The Blaze TV roast of Joe Biden is coming up next.